Death with Dignity. What is it and why is it so controversial? In this video, I'm going to talk about the Death with Dignity law. Where is it and what's the criteria? I'll explain how the medication works and I'll give you my personal experience of some of my patients who have taken it. Most people don't know that the Death with Dignity medication is available to us in 11 different states in the US. The Death with Dignity law allows someone who is terminally ill to take medication to end their own life. As a hospice nurse, I think this should be available to everyone in every state, a federally funded thing that is available to all Americans if they want it and meet criteria. I get a lot of heat for this because obviously people have strong beliefs. Some people think this is suicide. Some people think we're killing people. Dr. Kravorkian went to jail for this many years ago um, because he helped his patients uh, die through medication. This is a little different, I think, because the person is actually drinking the medication on their own. We as healthcare providers are not injecting them with anything or giving them anything with our own hands to end their own life. Personally, I think this is a personal belief and other people's beliefs should not play into if someone should be allowed to do this or not. As medical professionals, I have to abide by the laws of the state that I work in. And, and even if my belief system didn't go along with, didn't go along with someone being able to end their own life with a terminal illness, if they meet criteria, it shouldn't matter. My beliefs cannot come into play for someone else's life. I follow the laws of California. This is where I work. And in California, they say this is legal. So what is the criteria to actually get this medication? First, you have to live in one of the 11 states that allows this, which will be in the description of the video. So if you're curious, check that out. Second, each state has their own regulations, right? Some states are more lenient. Some states have uh, stricter rules like Montana, for example, you have to go through the court systems in order to get this medication. So it can take a lot longer to get it. In general, I can tell you the in general criteria you have to meet to get this medication. But remember, look up your state specifics because they are they are specific from state to state. So in general, their criteria will state that you have to have a doctor who states that you have six months or less to live due to a terminal illness. You also have to prove to two different doctors at two different times that you are alert and oriented and can make your own choices. So for instance, in California, this may have just recently changed, but you have to have one doctor say, yes, you have less six months or less to live and yes, you're alert and oriented and can make your own choices. And then a couple weeks later, you have to have another separate doctor say the same thing. So there's tons of hoops you have to jump through to get this medication. Once you have that, you also have to go through a psych eval to make sure that you are not um, specifically suicidal or have had some really uh, severe mental health issues throughout your life. So you have to pass that. Then uh, you have to prove that you also can take this medication yourself. Someone can help you. There are certain states, again, this is state specific, specific now. So you have to remember that to look into your own state, but some states do allow people with G-tubes to still take it. If their family member can help them, some states don't. Some states make you, you have to drink it on your own. So it's really specific, but in general, you have to be physically able to do it. This gets a little tricky because people with Alzheimer's dementia are Parkinson's disease who think, oh my gosh, yes, I'd want this medication. They do not qualify because by the time that they have six months or less to live, they can no longer decide for themselves because their memory, their memory and their alert and orientedness has declined so much by that time, they can no longer take the medication. So they do not meet criteria. That's one example I can think of that uh, this specific disease does not meet criteria, at least at this time in all of the 11 states that it does, they do not meet criteria. Unfortunately, some people think. In the video description, you'll also find two different websites that I love to get specific information for the state that you're in, or just information in general about the death with dignity laws if you're just curious to find out more about them. So here's how it usually goes once you get the end of life medication. So first, uh, usually again, the person has to um, take anti-nausea medicine before actually drinking the end of life medication. This is because 
the medication is uh, not great tasting and people have uh, vomited in the past. So we try to give them anti-nausea medicine about an hour before you take the actual end of life medication. So they take that and then usually in an hour or so, I mean, it's, it's, it's gray. You can wait a little bit longer, but it should be about an hour. Then you have a powder, which that's the end of life medication and you mix it with three ounces of fluid. Once it's mixed, you should quickly drink it. So it is something that you, once you decide on the day and the time, you kind of have to do it. Once you mix it, you should drink it pretty quickly. Um, I have been told and I've witnessed that it does taste pretty bad, uh, but they don't like you to chase it with anything too much just because of the um, vomiting issue. So most people will take a little bit of jello or a little bit of ice cream or sorbet or something just to minimize the bad taste. They drink that medication when they're ready and in three to seven minutes ish, from my experience, the person will fall asleep. And I mean deep sleep. They will basically go unconscious. No struggling, they never show pain. And then within three to seven minutes, they usually will start going into the actively dying phase of death. Meaning like a few hours to a few days before death, most people will look unconscious, changes in skin color, changes in breathing, have the terminal secretions. That usually all happens, but it happens within three to seven minutes. And then usually about 45 minutes to an hour um, until the person actually dies. So for, for those 45 minutes to an hour, the person usually is just so showing the regular signs of actively dying, not showing signs of pain, not showing signs of suffering, and then they die. So here's my personal story where I was the nurse who witnessed one of my patients taking the medication. So just to start off, this is one of, to me, one of my most beautiful stories, one of my most beautiful, sacred, cherished memories that I've gotten to witness um, someone at the end of their life. To me, it's like, it's just so beautiful. I know it can seem crazy to say that and most people would think that sounds, uh, it, it was sad, there was sadness there, but in general, to witness the fact that I live in a state that someone can take back control of their life and their death, it was a proud moment for me and something I'll always, always remember. So this woman had decided to um, get this medication and then to come on hospice. So she got the end of life medication and then came uh, onto hospice for her terminal cancer. And uh, I was going to be the admitting nurse. So since I was the admitting nurse, her and the family asked, hey, can you also be there for when I take this medication just to make sure everything goes as planned and you can just help us. Now I will say in general, a nurse does not have to be there. It can be as personal uh, and private as you want it to be. Some people want a nurse, some people don't want a nurse. And also you can always get this medication and then never take it. You can get this medication and hold on to it for three months, take it the next day, never take it. It's up to you. So this person did hold on to her medication for I'd say a month or so. And then once they got their affairs all in order and decided how they wanted to do it and what they wanted to do, they chose a date and had me come over. When I got there, they were um, with their parents because they were younger, their friends and um, their significant other. And they were watching home movies and laughing and talking and having a great time. And I was just there to observe and to help them whenever they needed. So. Uh, they picked a time for her to take the anti-nausea medication, making sure she was ready and prepared because once you take that medication, you usually have to take the end of life medication about an hour later. And again, you can stop, you don't ever have to take it. I've never experienced that where someone decided not to do it, but it's always a personal choice. So within an hour, the person mixed the medication herself and then drank it really quickly had some sorbet to help with the taste and jokingly said bye to all of her loved ones. And her loved ones all laughed and she laughed and I laughed. Like we, it was a, ironically, a funny moment. Uh, she basically like made a, a last joke before she fell asleep. After she said that, she laid down because you get really tired really quick. You fall asleep within three minutes. And I just remember seeing her lay down and her loved ones like envelop her and just saying, <laughs> I could cry right now. And we're just saying, I love you and thank you for loving me. And you know, it's a bunch of sweet nothings, like a cocoon of love around this person who um, was about to die. And 
she went unconscious. For a moment, I will say, I thought she had already died. I thought she died very quickly because she wasn't breathing, her color changed. And I thought, man, that was quick. Um, but then soon after she took a really deep breath and started the actively dying phase. So she had changes in breathing, changes in skin color, fully unconscious, mouth open, eyes open. She looked just like someone who was actively dying. So it's like she drank the medication and then skipped all the transition and just started actively dying. She showed no signs of pain, very comfortable. And about 45 minutes later, her heart stopped and she did die uh, very peacefully in her home with her loved ones. And like I said, it was one of the most beautiful things I had ever seen uh, because there was so much love in that room. It was an honor. It was an honor. And again, like I said, I know this is a controversial topic and many people have many beliefs about it, but from my experience, I think it's a personal choice and everyone should have it. And from my experience, it's a comfortable, beautiful way to die. To me, from my experience, this should be available to everyone in every state. This should be a federal law. Now, if you want more information, don't forget to check out the description of the video. You'll find websites there. And don't forget to subscribe for more death and dying information.